<laughs> reforming Fannie Mae just was not a huge priority. And the topic came up only because of a budget dispute. Critics of President Johnson complained that the federal budget did not really reflect all of the obligations of the federal government. So LBJ appointed a commission to try to settle this debate. And in 1967, that commission decided that the debts of agencies such as Fannie Mae should be included in the federal budget. In the case of Fannie Mae, that would have added something like $2.5 billion. Well, we couldn't really admit that we were spending all that money subsidizing home mortgages. So LBJ's White House dusted off Eisenhower's idea. Housing legislation in 1968 provided for the sale of Fannie Mae to private shareholders. Here's Johnson signing the bill. But Fannie Mae would still have a charter from the government and it would still have a role in public housing policy. So it was still going to look and feel a lot like a government agency. No one seems to have thought very much about whether there was a contradiction here between having a public policy role but being owned by private shareholders wanting maximum profits. Officially, the government would not guarantee the debts. In fact, the government would officially deny that it had any responsibility for Fannie Mae's debts. But Fannie Mae would still be borrowing lots of money in the bond market on Wall Street. And the buyers of those bonds would assume that when it came right down to it in a crisis, Uncle Sam would have to make good on those debts. This became known as the implied guarantee. Congress never enacted it, but there it was. It meant that Fannie Mae could borrow money very cheaply which meant that Fannie Mae could be very profitable and push aside competitors who did not have an implied guarantee. 